here we are. We have five pieces, uh, the two tenant pieces that Becky just showed, or the three, uh, the middle still two with the two welded colors and the two horizontals. If you, once you have all the pieces, take your time and put them all together, uh, check or check twice if it's all square, uh, make sure it lays flat. To lay it flat on the table, you actually need little scrap pieces under the corners because this is an inch thick and this is just the corners. So scrap pieces of an eighth uh, work. On this picture, uh, you can't see them because I haven't have them on the picture. Uh, if it does not fit quite right, uh, sometimes you just need to change the pieces around to the right piece to the left, the left to the right, or just turn them 180, uh, just like in a puzzle. If that's not enough, then you, you uh, have to make corrections. And it, it really pays that at this stage, you make sure everything is exactly what you want. Uh, the length of every piece needs to fit. You need to make sure that nothing is tilted. This is tilted here. If I, if I would go ahead here and, and start riveting, this is, this is very hard to, to correct at the end. So correct it now. Uh, gaps here i have a gap there's probably a tilt in this horizontal that needs to be taken out uh, before i start riveting for the top and bottom uh, everything is supposed to match exactly uh, what you see here this is not matching a uh, little bit enlarged it's not matching if you look through the holes, it's not matching either. Uh, also, at the end, you see there is a little uh, bend in here. It, it's, uh, there, there's a gap on the outside, not on the inside. That needs a little bit of correction. With my middle piece here, I was lucky. Uh, I just needed to turn one of the pieces 180 degrees, and I had an exact fit. For the riveting, we've heard that before. For a typical tenon that I do, I, I have about one and a half to two times the diameter sticking out at the end. Uh, for this exercise, I want a uh, recessed tenon. Uh, so it should be one time or even a little bit less. I started with 5 sixteenths one time uh, when I uh, did my first rivet and uh, it wasn't all the way in the counter sung hole so I ended up with a quarter that, that worked best. Uh, when doing hammering the tenants uh, to oh, when riveting the tenants make sure that you protect the, the tenon that's sticking out on the other end. This is just a little, little block with a drilled hole. Uh, I like to rivet tenons vertically, if, if ever possible. You can do it laying flat on the table, but it's much harder uh, to uh, hammer straight if you if you hammer vertical so whenever i can i i try to do that upright some consideration considerations here for the for the uh, closing of the tenons closing of the rivets do one at a time and then after one is done do check the squareness any tilt, any, any kind of uh, 
incorrectness that you see, correct them immediately after, after you did one. Don't wait until you have the second or the third. It gets harder and harder the further you go to get your grill straight again. But make sure you always have a solid mass under the other end when you hit the, hit the tenon to do the rivet, either the solid table or the anvil. If you just clamp your piece in the vise and, and try to do uh, the riveting, you probably end up with scratches on the sides, at least uh, in, I, I, I'm never able to do that. Sometimes it's the only way, but uh, a solid piece of steel on the other side is much better than, than clamping. Riveting, there's a couple ways to do this. Uh, I, I call this freehand. I just stuck my piece through the pritchel hole. I have my little block on the other side to, to protect the other end tenon. And, and I use a little rubber grommet that fits my pritchet hole. And then I, I can hammer from, from up down. And that way I'm, I'm, I'm pretty accurate on, on the tenon make, on the uh, riveting. Another way is clamped in the vise, but as you see here, uh, I use soft edges, soft jaws in the vise, and I do this side tenon while the other side is clamped. And I have my little block here. My table is pretty solid, so this is almost working like, like an anvil at least for a little uh, rivet, just, just 5 sixteenths. Uh, after I have done this, I would turn the whole thing 180 degrees around, clamp this, and do this tenon sitting on the table. Uh, but enough for bigger rivets, I go sideways and just push my, my anvil uh, close to the vise and rivet on the side here. We will see all that in the movie later in the video. What I typically do if I have larger uh, things to rivet, kind of like a railing or something, uh, I clamp the side stop on the table. Then I bolt or rivet a backstop here. Uh, make sure everything is measured uh, and everything is straight. Uh, then I put some marks on the table here, chalk marks, lines. That way, if I rivet now from the side here and every, and my, my jig should somehow distort or the clamp gets loose or something gets out of out of control, I easily see that these lines are not lining up with my, with my grill anymore. And I can correct that before I make bigger mistakes. You see the, uh, the, the blocks here that make sure that the whole thing is flat on the table. My sequence that I used and that you will see in the video is I do the first two rivets freehand uh, using the Pritchell hole to get a U shape. Then I do a thorough uh, investigation for out of plane, out of angle and, and do corrections. And then for the other two corners, I use the uh, uh, vice clamp method that I showed before. The center still uh, rivets I don't do at this time, I leave that for later. Uh, there is a good chance that uh, when, they, when I put the inwards in the scrolls, uh, that I still need to move this, maybe a hole, 
for the center blind rivet or anything. So it doesn't matter if it's riveted or not. So I leave it open and then I'm sure. Uh, but I don't regret that I can get to all sides of the center still. Uh, an alternative is uh, that uh, you thread your uh, oversized, overlong uh, tenons, and then you can screw your whole uh, grill together, and then that way do one rivet after the other. Uh, Mark will have some more uh, to say about how to do the, uh, the threading and schooling. And that gets me to the video. So here's the, the finished frame with the center still. So I take all my pieces, put them together. not flat, but that's because the, the little balls here are thicker than, than the frame. It's all flat now. See, I had to I had to change one end. That's what we've seen before in the presentation. All right. Check the distance again. It's good now check the diagonals to make sure it's it's all straight 90 degrees angles and then after i'm finally happy with what i have here i actually had to go back to the anvil a couple of times to to make corrections then i put numbers on all my connections And that way I, I know which part belongs where. Here's my setup with a little grommet, a little block in the bottom. And this is actually pretty stable. I can put the piece on and it just stays there. You see a little bounce here. The reason for that is that uh, the other end is not on the really footing. It is just on the on the wooden stump. But it's the bounce wasn't too bad. So it works that way. You see here, I, I first heat the tenon from the side, and then as I get closer to finishing this thing, I heat it straight down and, and heat the, the surrounding with it. You see this tenon sticks out a little bit here. Uh, that was my test tenon. I filed that down later. Correcting for tilt here before it's too late. And then checking the squareness again. And then go to the second tenon. So this is still all pretty stable here. I, I don't even need to, to hold the horizontal. You 
watch this closely, you see that this U shape is not in one plane. So I had to correct that before I went to the other side. I had I had put this this jig on the table just for a picture, but then I ended up using it to to check my my squareness. I didn't use it for everything. You just saw that that this is still loose here. Uh, what I did is I didn't close the first two rivets all the way down. I closed them down almost to the end, but not quite. That allows me to do corrections before it's too late. Checking the squareness again. Now I go to my vise and clamp the whole thing. If I have a setup like this, uh, this rivet here is kind of too high for to comfortably hammer. So I use a little step and, and step up on the step. That way I can, I have more control hammering exactly straight down. And here, at this point, I, I created a problem. It's not, it's not in plane anymore. So I, what I did is I just got one, one side up and then pushed the other two, this corner and this corner down. That wasn't thick enough, so used something a little higher And pushed it down, and that was enough to, to straighten that out. Now we get to the last rivet. As you saw, this 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 wasn't all closed down, so I just used a rubber bungee. So sometimes I I use ratchet straps to close things down if they don't want to go. So I, I don't have to push with all my weight before I rip it. So that's the last rivet. Almost like a tool. That's the end of this.